In this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations by graphing. So if you recall, a quadratic equation is a polynomial function of degree 2 with standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. It's equal to 0 because it is an equation. So you can solve the quadratic equation by graphing the corresponding quadratic function. Function because now instead of 0, we have f of x here. So the solutions to a quadratic equation are called the roots. So that's a special name uh, for the solution of a quadratic equation. Now you can find the roots of a quadratic equation by graphing. So when you graph it, you are looking for the x-intercepts of the graph. Now this is where the quadratic function is equal to 0, and hence the values of x for which f of x are equal to 0. So since we're talking about 0, Another name is also called zeros, which is another name for the solution. So just to reiterate, the quadratic equation, when we solve the quadratic equation, we are looking for the roots. If we are solving for the graph, we get the x-intercepts. And when we're looking at the quadratic function, they are called zeros. So the roots, x-intercepts, and zeros, and the zeros are actually all the solutions of the quadratic equation. So I'm going to start off kind of simple. Um, let's take a look at this first example. So it's asking you to find the roots of the quadratic equation represented by the graph. So if we look at the graph, we are looking for the x-intercepts of the graph. So if we take a look, the x-intercepts would be right here and also right here. So the solution, or the roots, would be x is equal to negative 5 and negative 1. So if the graph crosses really nicely at the integers, it's really easy to find the roots. But what happens if I don't give you the graph, but you have only a function here or an equation? So in example 2, we have 0 equal to this quadratic. So we don't have the graph, but I would like you to graph to find the solution. Now in order for us to graph, because it's in standard form right now, we need to change it to vertex form. So let's go through that process. So I'm going to rewrite this as f of x equals to negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 19. So I'm going to graph the function. And in order for us to write this in vertex form, I first need to factor out the negative 2 because that's the coefficient. And we don't want to have um, a coefficient right in front of the x squared. So we have negative 2 factored out. We get x squared. And then positive 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6x. And plus, so we need to fill in this blank because we are completing the square so that we can write it in vertex form. I don't factor out a negative 2 from the negative 19. We're going to have that on the outside. So. The number that goes in the blank, we're going to take the middle coefficient, so it's negative 6. We're going to half it, which gives us negative 3, and then we're going to square that. And negative 3 squared would give me 9. So we're going to add 9 and also subtract 9 because this actually is like adding 0. Now when we factor, we only want to factor the first three terms. So we need to kick the negative 9 out. So we're going to do that by multiplying the negative 2 times the negative 9, and that gives us positive 18. So it's now no longer inside the brackets because it's been multiplied by the negative 2. It's been distributed already. So now we have this equation here. I can factor this quadratic, and that will be x minus 3 all squared. So you can think of it as you half the 6, or you square square root the 9. And 18 minus 19 is now negative 1. Okay, so now that I have this in vertex form, let's graph. So in this one, I'm going to just use a quick table of values so you can see what this looks like. My vertex is 3 and negative 1, which is from these two numbers here. We're going to place that in the middle of our table. And then we're going to pick two numbers on either side of 3. 
So I'm going to go three. I'm just going to go in order three, four, five, and then two and one. So when I plug in one, one minus three is negative two. Negative two squared is four. Then we multiply by negative two to give us negative eight, and then minus one to give us negative nine. Now, I know that this should be symmetrical, so I'm going to check 5 as well. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then minus 1, we get negative 9. So don't forget to do order of operations. Remember that we subtract, we square, and then we multiply, because exponents are done before multiplication. Let's do 2. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 2, and then minus 1, we get negative 3. And you do the same thing with 4, and you will find that that's also negative 3. So I'm going to plot my 5 points. So I get 1, negative 9, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 3, and 5, negative 9. So I'm going to connect my 5 points. And I know it opens down because there is a negative in the front of the first coefficient. Now you can see that when I graph this, this graph, there actually is no x-intercepts. So because there is no x-intercepts, there's actually no solution. Now technically I wouldn't have to actually graph, knowing that the vertex is at 3, negative 1, and seeing that it opens down, I know that it's not going to hit the x-axis. So I could have not avoided the pain of actually drawing the graph, but actually just knowing that there are no x-intercepts. So my solution here is um, there are no x-intercepts, and therefore there is no solution. All right, so lastly, just to summarize what we've done here, um, you can see that in this graph we had two solutions. In this graph we had none. So there are three possible outcomes when solving a quadratic equation. So like in the first graph, we can have two x-intercepts. So if the graph crosses the x-axis twice, we will have two x-intercepts. So two x-intercepts gives rise to two real zeros, because they're f of x, or y value is zero, which are also called two distinct roots, which means that they're different. So we can have the graph pointing up, or we can have the graph pointing down, and we would still have two solutions. Now what happens, how would we get one solution? Well, that occurs when the vertex of the parabola just touches right at the x-axis. So you can see here there's one x-intercept, there's one real zero, and there's also then one root. So we can have the graph pointing up, or we can also have the graph pointing down. Now lastly, as you saw in the second example here, the graph didn't even touch the x-intercept. So our last possibility is that there are zero real x-intercepts, so there are zero real zeros and zero real roots. So again, the graph can point up or it can point down. It doesn't matter how many times it crosses the y-axis, but it's actually the x-axis that we are looking for and where that occurs.